Kash Patel was the acting secretary of defense under Donald Trump. In a new discussion, a video released, Kash Patel says that Donald Trump and the Department of Defense offered up National Guard troops to the mayor of D.C. and Nancy Pelosi two days before the Capitol insurrection, as they call it. It was a riot. But Mayor Muriel Bowser and the Democrats said no. This is interesting because the feds apparently got information, had foreknowledge, potentially even informants, and they knew that there was a serious threat against the Capitol. How serious? Well, it depends on what you think may have happened, but we know what did happen. And in the discussion, Cash mentions that the entire south side of the Capitol building where people actually breached it was unmanned. In one viral video, you actually see a guy walk up to cops saying, why aren't you doing anything to stop this? There were actually people in the crowd outside the Capitol trying to stop it. But a bunch of crackpots broke their way in. And here we are. This story isn't completely about what happened during the 1-6 insurrection, as the Democrats call it. It's actually about the country as a whole. In a new story, we're learning Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago has asked Biden for help amid crime wave after dismissing Trump's offer. That's right. Mayor Lori Lightfoot in Chicago is dealing with massive crime, gun violence, murder and chaos. And it's been this way for some time because crime has been skyrocketing. She had an offer from Donald Trump to bring in federal law enforcement, and she said no, effectively, figuratively spitting in the face of Trump, saying we will not have your federal troops in our city. Now, it's Joe Biden. Now she's like, oh, Biden, can you please send some federal assistance? We need some troops on the ground to deal with crime. Now, perhaps you could say, Tim, she's learned her lesson. It wasn't that she hated Trump. It was that she just didn't realize she needed the help. She thought she could handle it. Oh, please spare me. This is about me making an argument, not just placating the left and acting like, oh, everything's normal. No, let's make the argument. Lori Lightfoot knew the city needed help. I'm from Chicago. I know exactly what goes on there. They've needed federal help for a long time. But of course, Just like with D.C. and just like with Minnesota and many other jurisdictions, they refuse. In fact, in Portland, Oregon, as the lunatics were throwing firebombs and explosives at a federal building, what did Oregon say? We will not work with federal authorities. They, in fact, threatened to sue. I think they actually did file a lawsuit against the federal government. All of these state and local leaders We're saying we would rather watch the cities burn than give Trump any kind of victory. And that's what we were dealing with for some time. And now we can see the crooked, corrupt double standard. You would stand there and spit in my face. I have family in Chicago. Lori Lightfoot is a disaster. Her personal feelings got in the way of keeping the city safe. And people lost their lives and people lost their livelihoods. So here it is, their big narrative about January 6th. And we know you had an offer for National Guard assistance. We know that the Fed said or had foreknowledge that there could be some problem or threat to the Capitol. We know that Parler was actually sending in information they had. Yet still, big tech colluded to shut down Parler and destroy them. And they did. And now they act like we had no idea this was going to happen. It's pathetic. It's disgusting. And it's corrupt. But let's talk about what's happening in these cities now, because now Oakland police are saying we're in a crisis. AOC is saying this, 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 the subways are flooding and she blames climate change. Dude, your city, it's your fa- it's partly her fault for losing the Amazon deal. Not like I like Amazon. It's pathetic and it breaks my heart. Let's actually read through these stories and and I'll tell you what's going on. Did you know that Trump was actually about to pull the trigger on the Insurrection Act? He just didn't have he didn't didn't have it in him, I guess. I don't know if it was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, but something needed to be done and Trump wouldn't do it. And the Democrats wouldn't let him do the bare minimum at the very least. So I think all of our federal leadership has just become trash Eh, for the most part. Some some get free passes. All right. Or not free passes, but some have earned my respect. You know, Rand Paul, Thomas Massey, Josh Hawley's pretty good. But let's read. Before we do, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast, but also to support our fierce 
and independent journalism. That's right. Timcast.com is completely independent, owned and operated by me, financed by me, and we are growing. But actually, I'll say this. It's financed by you, the members. When you become a member and that money goes into our membership pool where our, our company's resources, you know what I do? I hire, I hire more people. We hired like 20 something people already. It's fantastic. We've got a new paranormal show coming. We're expanding the vlog to build culture. And with your help, we're going to have way more journalists and fact checkers and investigations and undercover operations. And of course, they're going to uh, come after us. But we're growing really quickly thanks to your help. Let's read this news. Before we get started, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel and share this videos, share this video on your social media, wherever you can. It's the best way to help grow a podcast and help us do our work. From Yahoo News. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot has requested President Joe Biden send federal troops to her city amid a rising crime wave and offer she previously rejected under former President Donald Trump. And it was worse last year. You had people throwing Molotovs. There's one video where a guy fires a gun to try and break into some store. I think it was on the Mag Mile. The Mag Mile in Chicago is like this big, fancy shopping district. Lightfoot, who greeted Biden at the O'Hare International Airport on Wednesday, petitioned the president for assistance after Chicago saw more than 100 shootings over Independence Day weekend, the deadliest weekend so far this year. Quote, this morning we woke up to a city that is reeling yet again from another night of violence, this time not just against our residents, but against those who are sworn to protect us. The mayor said in a statement about the shootings, which included at least 13 children and three police officers, we must be united and all in this and, and all in this together. Everyone from the federal government on down must do their part to address this scourge of violence. I've got a, I've got an, I've got a, a, a potential solution. How about you let people defend themselves? How about you recognize all of these shootings were people who illegally obtained guns? And considering it's so restrictive in Chicago, let people in stores and their homes defend themselves. See what happens. Now, look, I get it. It's bad. Gun violence is a problem. But the big problem in Chicago is that you have gang activity, honor shootings, and people going and illegally obtaining weapons, and then regular people can't protect themselves. So these people are emboldened. Perhaps it seems a little counterintuitive. I know many on the left can't understand how more guns could actually reduce gun crime. It's simple. These people who are armed might be like, I better not do this because that dude might have a weapon. I don't know if it's a perfect solution, but I can tell you whatever it is you've been doing isn't working. And the gun control you've implemented didn't work at all. Try something else. Here we go. Lightfoot's request came after she, came after she asked Trump not to send federal agents to the city last July, saying it would, be, it would spell disaster. Quote, what we do not need and what will certainly make our community less safe is secret federal agents deployed to Chicago. She wrote in a letter last summer obtained by WBEZ. Any other form of militarized assistance within our borders that would not be within our control or within the direct command of the Chicago Police Department would spell disaster. Hypocrisy much? The Democratic mayor added that such action would endanger her residents. Her comments this week echo a plea she made with Biden last week for the federal government to step in following another deadly Chicago weekend. This is a national problem, she said last Tuesday. Cities individually cannot tackle this problem. We just cannot. In Chicago, we've done absolutely everything possible that, that no, you actually had Donald Trump offer. Milwaukee, or I should say uh, Kenosha, you had in Minnesota, you had in Oregon, you had all these places where Trump said, hey, I got the National Guard ready and waiting. And what do we hear from a lot of conservatives? They say if Donald Trump actually sent in National Guard against the wishes of these jurisdictions, they'd call him a fascist. And my response is, they called him a fascist anyway. At the very least, Trump could have done something to protect people. He offered it. And so what? Republicans are scared to use the power they, they wield because perhaps they barely wield it and they don't know how. The Department of Justice recently announced it will be sending a strike force to Chicago and other violent cities across the country to quell gun violence. The strike forces will investigate and disrupt the networks that channel crime, crime guns into our communities with tragic consequences. The effort reflects our shared commitment to keep communities safe, the department announced last month. Take a look at this. Lightfoot on federal troops. Trump won't foolishly deploy unnamed agents to the city. It was the big lie. Lie, 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 lie. There's a video of some federal, uh, I believe it was uh, federal agents detaining someone in Portland for questioning. 
And they started claiming that Trump's Gestapo was secretly rounding people up. And it's just like, dude, these are people who are in the, pr- in the process of committing crimes. Yeah, look, I don't like the federal government. I don't like their expansion of powers. I think they are very much corrupt. Donald Trump had the ability to wield some of that power. He couldn't do it. He should have fired a lot of people. He didn't. He trusted the wrong people. There you go. He could have fired Fauci. He didn't. Trump made a lot of mistakes. He just was not ready for this. Look at this. The heated exchange between Mayor Lloyd Lightfoot and Donald Trump continued. This is from last year, mind you, with the mayor stating federal agents will not come to Chicago streets. Incredible. Quote, the Trump administration is not going to foolishly deploy unnamed agents to the streets of Chicago. As I understand it, what we will be getting are some additional resources in the FBI, DEA and the ATF. And unlike what happened in Portland, what we will receive is resources that are going to plug into existing federal agencies that we work with on a regular basis to help manage and suppress violent crime in our city. It's very simple. Trump said we can put FPS, CBP on the ground. They can assist with your local law enforcement. And she said no. She would rather see the city suffer and burn. There was one viral story. Chicago has something called aldermen. I don't know how common the idea of an alderman is in other cities, but they're basically like neighborhood mayors. Okay, so you've got like the mayor who runs the city. But then Chicago is a bunch of neighborhoods uh, with different names. You got Ukrainian Village, you got uh, Midway, you know, you got Logan Square, things like that. And these areas sort of it's broken down differently, but there's aldermen in a in a viral phone call that got leaked. One of these aldermen was complaining that the, the, the city government raised the bridges downtown, forcing the rioters into neighborhoods. Incredible. It's like she wanted regular people to suffer. Perhaps the issue was then they could say, look, it's all Donald Trump's fault. Look what's happening in Trump's America. And that's what they were saying. And the left danced around laughing. I mean, you had Black Lives Matter and Antifa engaging in the violence and getting away with it. Did it strike that as odd to any of these people that the federal government was letting them get away with it? Talk about stupid, useful idiots. Well, check this out. The Washington Post. The White House has been trying to claim that Republicans are actually the ones defunding the police. You may have seen the story. Well, this one's fantastic because the Washington Post has rated these claims three Pinocchios, which is a pretty serious lie. Washington Post. Man, they defend the Democrats at every opportunity and they can't even do this. The Washington Post reports, Republicans often claim Biden would cut funding for police departments, a falsehood that has kept us busy churning out Pinocchio since the 2020 campaign. It's kind of funny. They opened the story by claiming Republicans lied about Biden saying he wanted to cut funding. It's a framing device. Biden said he wanted to reallocate funding. But let me explain to other areas. If you say we got cops who got a billion bucks in their budget, we're going to take half that and give it to paramedics. Are you cutting the budget of police departments? You see, even the Washington Post tries to falsely frame what's actually happening, what's actually being argued. They sift around the Republican quote hat, you know, full of quotes, hat full of quotes, and pull out one, and they keep pulling out until they find one that is out of context or or inaccurate. Let's say you got 100 Republicans. 80 80 of them give statements that are fairly accurate. uh, 10 of them give kind of off statements, and 10 of them are just like, you really don't understand what you're talking about. It's the left does you'll see the entirety of the mainstream right saying something reasonable. They'll take the one unreasonable thing said by one person and say, look at this lie. Look at this lie. They're lying. They're the ones who hype it up. But check it out. They say White House advisors are trying to turn the tables on the GOP with a new talking point, claiming it's actually Republicans who are working to defund police. That one I find hilarious, mind you. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki brought up the same 1.9 trillion package, the American Rescue Plan, at a briefing in June 23rd, yes, Republican lawmakers opposed a $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief bill, which included money for state and local aid. Many local governments are tapping those emergency funds to patch budget holes, hire officers, and avoid layoffs. Although Republicans all opposed the package, no one voted to cut or defund anything. Rather, Democrats proposed $350 billion in emergency funds for state and local governments, and Republicans voted against those extra funds that is not a reduction. That's not defunding the police. The facts. Let's define what it means to defund the police, a popular movement among some liberal activists. You mean far leftists? 
Only in rare instances are proponents calling for the outright elimination of police departments. I mean, like the New York Times had an op-ed that said, yes, we mean abolish the police, but you get the point. Defunding is like what they did in New York. They had, I think the budget was like five billion. They took a billion away or something like that, or it was six. Many departments, hundreds actually, have reduced the budgets of their departments. So here we go. Overall, we award three Pinocchios, three Pinocchios. The White House is lying to you. They do this all the time, actually. Under Donald Trump, they say Trump was lying all the time. But the reality was, while certainly there are framing devices used by the president and everyone has their perspective, boy, did the media lie relentlessly. One of my favorite things to have happened was when there was the uh, White House aide and Jim Acosta of CNN was holding the microphone and refusing to give it up. And the aide came to grab it. And then you can see Jim Acosta pull his arm down. What I think happened was she was trying to grab the microphone from him and then he wasn't going to let it go. And something happened where they both, you know, kind of jerked. And the media all went nuts saying this intern tried ripping the microphone away from him. And I'm like, first of all, it's not his microphone. Why wouldn't he let it go? And even if she did, and Jim Acosta is saying like, I am not going to give you your microphone back. More importantly, it was clearly not what happened. Jim Acosta was just not willing to, let, to give up the mic. And the media absolutely always frames things to be anti-Trump, even when it's a young woman who clearly has no idea what's going on and says, please, can I have the microphone back? That's the media manipulation they do. So I find it particularly funny when even the Washington Post says they're full of it. They say, in this case, there's not even a line item to attach to the White House's claims that Republicans are trying to defund the police. The American Rescue Plan devoted $350 billion to state and local aid, a pot of money that was designed for a variety of budget plugging purposes. Among those is keeping police, teachers, and emergency medical technicians at work. But going strictly by the bill text, lawmakers had no guarantee that police would get a slice of the pie. What's more, voting against a one-time infusion of cash is not the same as voting to cut funding. There is little basis to claim that Republicans are trying to defund police. I mean, it's obvious to all of us. Thank you, Washington Post, for calling out their lies. Saki and the White House are on more solid ground by framing this talking point in terms of the COPS program, which some Republicans did vote to cut funding for as recently as the Trump administration. It's the only thing keeping this talking point from being four Pinocchios. OK, so what does a Pinocchio mean? Four Pinocchio means a whopper of a lie. If it were not for the COPS program, it would have been a whopper of a lie, saith Washington Post. Three Pinocchios means significant factual errors. This gets in the realm of mostly false, but it could include statements that are technically correct, but are taken so out of context as to be very misleading. The line between two and three can be a bit fuzzy, and we do not award half Pinocchio, so we strive to explain the factors that tipped us toward three. But it was almost four. Okay, I don't care about their Pinocchio standard. They were basically lying. Now I bring you to Washington, D.C. Jack Posobiec tweets, breaking, Cash Patel confirms the Trump admin was trying to deploy the National Guard for January 6th, but were blocked. Let me play this clip for you. Why on January 6th, when it has now publicly been admitted by the FBI that they had information that there could possibly be a situation like that at the United States Capitol, why weren't the cabinet secretaries under President Trump briefed? Why didn't the FBI put a thousand uniformed agents around the U.S. Capitol? Where was the fence? Right. These are the lackings of J that led to January 6th. These are the mistakes, intentional or otherwise, that led to January 6th. And if you look at the video from January 6th, and they still won't release all of it, an entire side of the Capitol, I believe it's the south side, was totally unmanned. No police officers whatsoever. And that's where the crowd first came in through. And you have to ask yourself, what happened on January 6th? Now, look, I was chief of staff of the Department of Defense on the 6th. We had offered the Capitol Police and Mayor Bowser of Washington, D.C., thousands of National Guardsmen and women two days before January 6th. And they turned. So let me issue a, a, a in segment correction. I said Pelosi. That was wrong. He said the Capitol Police and Mayor, Mayor Bowser. Us down. So it could have let, me, let me get that down. repeated. Thousands of National Air Bowser of Washington, D.C., thousands of National Guardsmen and women two days before January 6th, and they turned us down. They turned us down. The offer for thousands of National Guard to be deployed to protect the Capitol. 
The FBI is admitted to have had foreknowledge, something, there was a threat. And instead of briefing the president and letting him know, that's what happens. It's a big lie. January 6th is the Democrats' big lie. They say that it was an insurrection. Yeah, there were some people fighting. There was a decent amount of fighting and there was a riot. And these people were wrong and, and, you know, and they, fa- they should face their penalties. But boy, are they going, what, what are they calling it? Shock and awe, I think they're calling it. Is that what Cash Patel says? Somebody said that. They're basically trying to maximize all of the penalties against people for like trespassing. It's very extreme. In some videos, you can see one guy saying, come on, guys, don't res- disrespect this house. It's not ours. In some videos, you can see the police opening the door and letting people in. Many videos show this. Insurrection, it was a riot. You poorly protected your building. You knew there was anger and the potential for a riot, and they did nothing. In other instances, there have been leftists who have stormed the, the Senate, the con- congressional buildings, shutting them down. Not an insurrection? No. Why? You know, I think it's very obvious that there's a very serious institutional bias against the right. The right is getting crushed. The left is winning. And that's, that's a reality. Doesn't mean they're going to win. We'll see. And even if they do win, how long will their victory last? We have this story from the New York, uh, uh, the New York Times from June 25th. Trump aides prepared Insurrection Act order during debate over protests. President Donald Trump never invoked the act, but fresh details underscore the intensity of his interest last June in, in using active duty military to curb unrest. The New York Times reported, responding to interest from President Trump, White House aides drafted a proclamation last year to invoke the Insurrection Act in case Mr. Trump moved to take the extraordinary step of deploying active duty troops in Washington to quell the protest that followed the killing of George Floyd, two senior Trump administration officials said. The aides drafted the proclamation on June 1st, 2020, during a heated debate inside the administration over how to respond to the protests. Mr. Trump, enraged by the demonstrations, had told the Attorney General Bill Barr, the Defense Secretary Mark T. Esper, and the chairman of the Joint Chief Staff, Mark A. Milley, that he wanted thousands of active duty troops on the streets of the nation's capital, one of the officials said. Mr. Trump was talked out of the plan by three officials, but a separate group of White House staff members wanted to leave open the option for Mr. Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act to call in the military. You probably know that Tom Cotton said, send in the troops. Maybe it would have been the right idea. Maybe not. I'm not a big fan of sending in the military. And in D.C., it wasn't nearly as bad as it was in other areas. Perhaps the National Guard or active duty military would have made sense in places like Minnesota and Portland or Seattle, where things are very, very serious. Washington, D.C. was never really that bad, and they were able to handle it. D.C. is always fairly mild. I mean, that city sees so much protest, they can really handle it. But what did Trump end up doing? He deferred so much. Unfortunately, he did not take any definitive action. Now, maybe it was twofold. Maybe both sides were hoping the other side would look bad. Maybe Trump was thinking, look, these riots are making the left look crazy. It's good for us. The problem with that logic is if y'all ain't doing anything anything about it while you're in power, why bother voting for you? Maybe the other guy will. Trump should have done just enough to stop this without going overboard or locking down cities. But he didn't. It's easy for me to say, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, so I really have no idea. Maybe they would have just said Trump's a fascist and it would have been really bad for him. Well, let's take a look at where we are now. How are things going? We have a crisis of violence. Oakland police chief says city is in a safety emergency and saw 12 hours of nonstop chaos when there were seven shootings in one night after department budget is cut. Oh, hey, defunding the police. There we go. And now they're in a crisis. Now they're desperate. Of course they are. I'm not a big fan of how police handle things. And lately I've been saying we should abolish the police. You know why? So long as they're controlled by these powerful leftists and democratic institutions and they will violate your rights, why give the left the power to do it? Call their bluff. The left keeps saying, defund the police, defund them. And I'm like, okay, do it. Do it. Come on. Yeah, they won't do it. They'll freak out. The people who live in these cities will panic and they'll beg someone to bring back their police. Republicans got to learn how to play poker, man. Instead, they're like, no, 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 we mustn't do that. You can say it. But you know what I'd say? I'd say, I'll tell you this. Here's what we're going to do. I I clearly see I'm in the minority here. Everybody wants to defund the police. Well, I don't. I think it's a bad idea. But I'm open to trying new things. So if you all think it's the right thing to do, do so with my blessing. 
And I'll, I'll be over here preparing a package to refund the police to to fund them again. Should the need arise? How does that sound? Then guess what happens? Oakland, like Chicago and many other cities who see massive waves of crime following the, the political spinelessness and fecklessness, then they can come to me and I can say, hey, I, I, I drafted this. I've been waiting. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry it didn't work out for all of you. See, I was right the whole time. Now check, take a look at this. Venice Beach homeless camp is finally being cleared after months of mayhem, rampant drug use and misery for residents. Why is that the police coming in and cleaning up the, the, the damage and the destruction from the lawlessness? Yeah. And is, does that mean that the misery for the residents will subside? Seems to be the case. So you mean that policing, shutting down this, this, these homeless encampments has helped make the area better? Hey, it looks like it. I worked with a homeless shelter network in Los Angeles. Network meaning it was a bunch of different buildings. One company that operated a bunch of different buildings. And they couldn't solve the homeless problem. You know why? People wanted to be homeless. So how do you solve a problem like this? Do you want to help people? Of course. Do you want to help the homeless and those in need? Absolutely. What if the people who are homeless aren't in need and are just enjoying that they get to exploit the system? There's a viral video where some guys are sleeping on Venice Beach like, it's great. It's a party 24-7. We can do whatever we want. No one's going to stop us. And if the police issue us a citation, we just go to the church. Church pays it. There are a lot of people who realized they can just say, oh, no, what was me? I'm homeless. What's really happening is that they're choosing to be homeless because a lot of people enjoy it. Look, maybe these uppity progressives don't realize this, but America is effing amazing. You go to any city, you stand in a street corner and you say, may I have money for a cheeseburger today and I will pay you back Tuesday? Guess what? Someone's going to be like, here's cheeseburger, bro. Don't worry about it. Stand in a street corner and say cheeseburger and nothing else. Cheeseburger? Cheeseburger. Eventually, someone will walk up with a cheeseburger. Cost a buck. Here you go, buddy. Here's a cheeseburger. Not in other countries. I mean, sure, in some other countries like, you know, Western wealthy ones, but not in many. A lot of people in this country realize you can sit back with your feet up, staring at the sky with a smile on your face because other people will sustain you. It's not going to work in the long run. You see what's happening when they're offering to pay this effective, which is what's what is effectively UBI. They're giving people 600 bucks unemployment, the eviction moratorium, telling people you don't have to work results in people saying, Okay, I won't work. People seem to have this utopian vision that if you just give people money, they'll start working. It's weird, isn't it? Now, if your employer offers you money in exchange for work, yeah, that one makes sense. But right now what's happening is that people can't compete with the free money. It's an interesting conundrum, isn't it? You've got a bunch of people who had their businesses shut down and can't work, so the government gives them money. But the government has to give everybody money because you can't just give money to one person. This is why I've often talked about why I used to be in favor of UBI. I loved the idea. I thought it would open the door to people for people to pursue passion. Then I realized it wouldn't work. Why? As your, your economy evolves and technology emerges that will displace certain jobs, UBI doesn't work because some people still have to work. You see the problem? Imagine you have a system where you say, okay, if you live in New York, we don't need you to work anymore because the food is made by farmers in rural areas. The farmers are going to say, why am I working? Why, why are my employees having to, to harvest the fruits and pick the apples while these people get it for free? Nah, nah, we're not going to live that way. We are not going to be serfs for you, capital city. And eventually they say, we're not going to do it. We're going to keep it all to ourselves and stop giving it away to these people for nothing, effectively for free. So what do they do? They say, OK, we're going to give everybody equally money right? That makes sense. Then you're getting money too, and you can supplement your income. Then the guy who was picking the apples goes, there's more than enough that I need to survive. Adios. Now there are no apples. It was a fun experiment, was it? It didn't work. Defunding the police didn't work. UBI doesn't work. People need to have personal responsibility. So here's my advice to all of you. Get out of the cities. Move out to the suburbs. Right now, there is a massive storm waging all around me. I can see it's cool. There's windows in every wall. It's sunroom. It's fantastic. And I'm watching the storm and there's critters and there's animals and they're running and hiding and there are wild fruits growing and I can go outside, breathe fresh air. 
I have some of the cleanest drinking water I've ever had in my life because of an excellent filtration system and well water. We are much more responsible for ourselves. Self-sustaining this morning, once again, I made my own breakfast with fresh cherry tomatoes, with, with uh, fresh eggs from the chicken coop. It's a great thing. And I know a lot of conservatives and rural people are just laughing because they've known that joy their whole life of having your own food. And to them, it doesn't mean much. But I come from the city. I grew up in Chicago. So many of you who lived in these cities, you're dealing with rampant, skyrocketing crime. Democrats who are selling you out and refusing to accept assistance because they hate Trump. Pollution. Feckless leadership. Be responsible for yourself. It's time to step out. Enjoy nature. And stop being the person who is working hard to fund those who refuse to do it. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.